The following program is seen statewide on California Public Television. Now this is what you call wide open spaces. The California desert. Specifically, we're near the nice little desert community of Ridgecrest. It's hot. It's over 100 degrees right now. It's windy and it's dry. I'm in the mood for some water. I want water to drink. I want water to splash around in. Right now, I'd be happy just to see some water. And we're in luck because according to my blowing in the wind AAA map right here, this area of the California desert is filled with lakes. And when you talk about lakes, of course, you're talking about water. So what we're going to do on this adventure, we're going in search of desert lakes and desert water. This should be a lot of fun. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go, but hopefully we're going to find something wet that's going to cool us off. And the nice thing about this entire adventure is that all of these lakes are located inside one of California's Golden Parks. Here we go. I love you, California. You're the greatest place of all. Well, there we were out in the middle of the desert in San Bernardino County, barreling down Ransburg Wash Road. And look at that road. It's just a straight ribbon of pavement as far as you can see off into the distance. And it got better, too because then we cut off onto a smaller, very bumpy, sandy road. And a couple of miles later, we had arrived at our first lake site. Okay, our adventure in search of lakes and water has begun, and we have hooked up with Lynn Gum. It says there you're from the California Desert District of the Bureau of Land Management. And the Bureau of Land Management has jurisdiction over a huge part of the California desert. We do. We, uh, amongst all our five offices, we have almost 9 million acres under jurisdiction. Here in Ridgecrest, we have about 1.9 million acres. 1.9 million acres of land that is filled with lakes because Absolutely. you know about this adventure, this quest that I'm on to find desert lakes and desert water. And according to my map, if I went down the highway 178 from Ridgecrest to Trona and then cut off on this little two-lane road and went about seven miles, I'd end up at Searles Lake. Well, I'm here. I've met up with you. Where's the lake? Well, the lake is right out here in front of us, but unfortunately the water evacuated about 3,500 years ago. <laughs> so we're 3,500 years late. Just a little late. So it's not a lake anymore. It's a dry lake. It is. It's a dry lake. Okay, we're here. Obviously, I've struck out on the water part of it, but I have a feeling that I've hit the jackpot right over here. What are we looking at over here, Lynn? Well, you're looking at some pretty unique land features that don't occur in too many places on the face of this planet. This is probably the greatest assemblage of them. They're called pinnacles. And they're tufa towers that are made by hot springs that have welled up when this was filled with water and mixed alkaline type substance with calcareous type substance and algae that was here and grew into these spires. So wait a minute, all these spires we're looking at out here would have at one time all been under the lake when it was here. On How many years ago? 3,500 years ago or so is where we date this. And at that point of time, this lake was about 600 feet deep. Okay, we've now come down into the Pinnacles Pit. And I got to tell you, Lynn, when you come down here and see them up close, they really, I mean, this is as beautiful a sight as I've ever seen with the blue sky and the clouds. Some of them are obviously, like this one right over here, taller than others. Has the wind, and boy, you really get the feeling of the wind right now. Has the wind worn them down over the years? Surely it has, that and water both. 
Well, not much water here in not the last 3,500 years. <laughs> not in the last 3,500 years, that's correct. But before that, this lake dates back to? As much as 100,000 years ago. And the lake kind of came and went. It had ebbs and flows. But these pinnacles were always kind of forming at the bottom of the lake when there was water in it. That's correct. There's a hot spot underneath this area that had some geothermal action, caused that hot water to come up in the bottom of the lake. It mixed its alkaline nature with muds that were here and algae. And just and built these up. Built these up. What are these? Are these made out of rock? Are these clay? What are these? They are a volcanic rock, tufa. Look at this. Here's what they're made of right here. Tufa. Tufa. Wow. So this is what these are made of. Absolutely. And how far does this go? How many pinnacles are there on this dry lake bed? In the whole assemblage, I believe somewhere between two and 400 different features out here. Look at this up here. Oh my gosh, and look it off in the distance. That looks like a little mountain with six or seven little pinnacles on top of it. Indeed. That's referred to as a ridge. There's three predominant landforms you'll see here. Those that are tall, like that, are ridges. This right over here on our right, which is shorter and longer, is called a tombstone. And what's this little thing just sticking up right out here? This is a spire. You will find some that are less than 10 feet tall and they're coal cones. Wow. And we'll see them all throughout here. Whoa. And look, this goes, I'm just looking, this goes way, way back over it here. It surely does. Do many people come out here like we're doing today? A lot of people come out here. We probably have visitation in this area of more than 20,000 on an annual basis. Wow. Well, I tell you what, their eyes must be getting big when they turn off on this dirt road like we did today. You feel like you're going somewhere on Mars or on the moon. Absolutely. And hasn't it been compared to that over the years? It has, that's why it's such a popular place to come film. Now what kind of movies, what movies have they made here? Cause there are a lot of famous movies made here. Yeah, we had back in the, the late 90s, we had Star Trek filmed here. Uh, somewhere around the year 2000, we did the latest edition of Planet of the Apes. Just a week ago, we finished filming on Land of the Lost brand new film coming out. Anything that has to do with being located on another planet somewhere far away. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> <laughs> look up here, look at this. This is huge. And then look, Cameron, right over here at this one. Boy, they all have, at different angles, they all have a different look to them, don't they? They surely do. If you come here early in the morning, you'll catch long shadows. Late at night, the same thing, and you'll see just different things all the time when you and sit here. And if you come here during the middle of the day, you'll be hot. You'll be hot. But this is really nothing, 100, is it? Not really for this area. It's not uncommon that we'll get temperatures in the 120, 125 range out here. Wow. This does. Just stand here and look out at this. Right here. This looks like something from another planet right here. Planet of the Apes, that's where they made the movie, right here. I was looking for the five-star restaurant for the luxury Platinum Hotel for all kinds of special facilities. Mm -hmm. Here they are. <laughs> that's it, right there. At least you got a restroom out here. And basically that's it, because when people come out here, they want to be out here, don't they? It's a primitive experience, and it certainly will give you a feel for what it's like to be in a primitive setting. Yeah, boy, it doesn't get, look at this, it doesn't get any more primitive than this. This is as basic and as raw and as real as it gets right out here in the middle of the desert. Now, I would expect that back in the ancient times, back when the Native Americans were living here, that they were living and fishing and hunting right around this lake when it was here. Yes, absolutely. A nice, cool, 
almost like an oasis in the middle of the desert. I don't think it was quite a desert at that time. Yeah, there was lots of water <laughs> here, right, okay. So we know the Native Americans used to be here back when it was a lake, but look what the good folks at BLM have discovered right here in the side of one of the pinnacles. What are we looking at here, Lynn? We're looking at the indomitable spirit of early California miners. This is an area they came out and explored, hoping to find riches here at the bottom of Cyril's Lake. Wait a minute, there were miners, there were miners. digging for gold out here in the middle of this? What can I say? <laughs> what year was this? This is circa 1890 to 1900. How would they have lived out here? There was nothing out here. There was nothing out here. The closest facility here at that point of time was at Cyril's Lake. John Cyril's had discovered borax there in 1878. So there was a mine going over here at Cyril's Lake, maybe five or six miles north of here. Across the dry, Across. barren desert. Exactly. And what did they do? What, what's back in here? Is this just one room that they dug out? That's all it is. They'd gone in, done a little bit of exploration, apparently thought they found something of, of while, and as you can see, it goes back in there 40 feet, and that's Were they it. digging back there or digging and living back there? Because I bet it's cool back in there, isn't well, it? Well, you know, it's all relative. When it's 125, 120 is cool. Yeah. So you can, it's a place to get out of the sun, Can certainly. we go in there Absolutely. just a little ways? Just a little ways. Well, there's not much here. It's not really a tunnel, but we are now inside one of the original historic miners mining tunnels put here in the late 1800s. And it is cooler back in here. It is. It's about 95. Might be that, yeah. <laughs> well, I struck out looking for water. The lake, as I was expecting to see it, is gone. There it is out there, Cyril's Dry Lake. Cyril's today. Dry Lake today. But even though I didn't find the water, we found the pinnacles and we found all of this wonderful history, geologic and human history that goes along with it. But I have another ace up my sleeve because I've been looking at my road map and there is another lake not far from here and I bet you there's water there. So we're gonna leave here and head to our next hopefully wetter destination in the desert. We're looking for water. Well, the journey in search of our next desert lake took us north on Highway 395, which is one of my favorite highways in our entire state. I mean, is this scenic or what? From 395, we turned east on Cinder Hill Road and before long, we were there. Okay, this is kind of a shock because, Lynn, I thought this was gonna be my ace in the hole. On the map, I read that this location was called Fossil Falls, which I thought meant a waterfall. But look over here, there's not a drop of water anywhere around here. What happened to the water? Well, the water pretty much disappeared about, I don't know, 5,000 years ago or thereabouts. So wait a minute, I'm 5,000 years late. Yes, sir, you are. <laughs> well, what is here? This looks like, this is all volcanic stuff out here. It is, it's, it's known as vesicular basalt. And it is a, an expression of a, a volcanic eruption and lava flow throughout this area from about 15,000 years ago up to as recently as about 5,000 years ago. So wait a minute, this could have all been happening at the same time. Water here and a volcano erupting here all at the same time about 5,000 years ago. Yes, sir. That must have made quite a show with the volcano erupting. Is that a volcano over there in the distance? That's a cinder cone. And yes, that was a type of volcano. So 5,000 years ago, if we'd been standing right here, we would have been, this would have been a, a lake? 
this throughout this area and north of here would have been covered in water there would have been a great huge river flowing through here and we'll see that as we get over here to the cut that makes fossil falls and when this lake was here the volcano would have been erupting and all this lava would have been coming into the water it would have been steaming and churning around would have been steaming would have been churning around and you would have had really a lava flow across the surface that's what you're seeing this expression right here see i wish i could have been here 5000 years ago as a geologist doesn't that kind of get your interest peaked a little bit well absolutely between that and at that point of time with as much water as we had here Obviously, we had fairly lush vegetation. We had quite a habitation of, of native aborigines that were here at that point in time. Wow. Well, let's hike out across what used to be filled with water. Today, it's volcanic lava, rock everywhere. This is almost prehistoric in the way it looks. Indeed. Back when there was water here, thousands of years ago, there were also lots of people living here as well, weren't there? Living? Yes, sir, there were. There were several different tribes that we still see expressed today. The Paiutes, the Shoshone, some Comanche, and uh -huh. others. And they were living and working right in this area. Right in this area, and it's borne out by what we see right here where we're standing. For example, this feature behind me right here is, is a hearth. It's an area where they would have had a fire and sat around this area making stone tools. Now, how do we know that that was a hearth? That just looks like a rock to me. It does, but there's some, some things about it that would tell us that it was a, a local gathering point. For example, if we get right down to the bottom of it, we'll see a, a number of obsidian flakes and, and there's some patina on this rock that suggests not just normal weathering, but perhaps some smoke that came up and carried soot to it. See, you got to know what you're looking for, don't you? See, I never would have, I wouldn't even have stopped here. And I certainly wouldn't have been stopping here to look at this. Yeah. I would have thought this was broken glass, but it's, it's not, is it? No, it's not. It, it certainly gives that appearance when you take a look at it in the sunshine because it reflects. But if you take a close look at this stuff down here, it's all black and it's actually naturally occurring obsidian. It's a volcanic deposit. And these are chips that, that came off of a major what would be called a core tool where folks were sitting here banging rocks together on that on that glass to make sharp points scrapers arrowheads all that sort of thing well there's still a lot of that well, around here today are all these little chips we see these were all done originally by the native americans here? yes sir that's what we believe certainly we have a feature off to the north and east by about five miles known as sugarloaf mountain where there's a great mountain of obsidian that was quarried by these people and it was brought over to this area where they made their tools and wow. it was used as trade medium throughout the area because it made such great great stone tools there is so much around here to look at if you know what you're looking at i guess that's the key you got to kind of read up on it and know what you're what you're walking into don't you you sure certainly do doesn't hurt at all to go to the library do a little research online find out a few facts about the area and then come out and look for it and enjoy well, it didn't take long. We have finally reached our destination and look at this. Welcome to Fossil Falls. Yes, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Fossil Falls. Now tell us about Fossil Falls because obviously, well, at one time was this a rushing body of water that came through here and cut all this out? Yes, sir. Uh, there was a couple of times when there was quite a bit of water that came through, the latest about three to 5,000 years ago. And the intensity of the water that was coming off of the melt from the glaciers from, from the north carved out this, this canyon right here through wow. this basalt. As you look along the edges of it, you'll see very finely and highly polished sides on these stones. So there was a lot of water. Tremendous here. amount of water. At that point in time, they say Owens Lake was over 600 feet deep, that China and Cyril's Lake were more than 600 feet deep. 
that Panamint Dry Lake now was 900 feet deep, and Manly Lake, which goes down the center of Death Valley, was also about that 900 feet deep. So there was a whole sequence of lakes. This one was part of what lake? This was south of the Owens Lake. The Owens, today's Owens today's Dry Owens. Lake. That's correct, today's and Owens Dry Lake. So this is dry. Yes, sir. And everywhere else we've been today is dry. Pretty much so. What you see is what you get out here in the desert. <laughs> okay, we're taking a break. I'm standing in my jacuzzi. Lynn is sitting in his. Absolutely. It's a naturally occurring event. And can't you just imagine sometime in the past, after a long day, hard chipping your stones, hunting, you came here to sit down, have a little jacuzzi bath, wash your feet. <laughs> Do you think that the Native Americans really might have done something like this? Well, yeah, I do think it's entirely possible. And, you know, we have this nice basalt rock here that as the day wears on, it heats up. So who knows, maybe you even had a little bit of a hot tub going for you that right here. That is amazing. I never would have thought of that, but you went right to it. Well, you know, a guy knows when he needs to take a rest. Okay, we have reached the actual falls themselves. That's where this whole thing got its name. That's true. The water would have come rushing right down here over that ledge and all the way out across the desert floor. Yes, sir. It would have followed the channel as far as it could have. Boy, we're coming down the hill now. So far on this adventure, we have struck out as far as finding water is concerned, but I have looked at my road map. I found a little blue dot. That means real water, not water that used to be here, but water that's still here. That's right. It's water that's still here today. And here's the water right here. We found it. It took us a while, but we have arrived at this beautiful body of water. We don't have to project back in time. We can see it today. Where are we, Lynn? And this is Little Lake, California. It is the last vestige of those series of lakes that we've talked about all day today, and it is what we have left is real live water here at this part of California. This is the only lake left out of that. Well, how many of them were there originally up well, here? Well, there was five. There was Owens Lake to the north, and it drained down through this valley to to the uh, Fossil Falls area that well, we yeah, were just that's in. Where we just were up at Fossil Falls. There's the cinder cone. That's kind of the landmark. That's right. And then it drained from here, went south, made an abrupt turn to the east, went into China Lake, which overflowed into Cyril's Lake, where we started this morning out at the Pinnacles. That lake flowed over into the Panamint Valley, into Panamint Lake, and that lake flowed over into Death Valley, into what's called Manly Lake. Lots of lakes, all of them dried up. Except what, this one. What's the, why is this one still here and all the others are gone? Well, the others are gone because we didn't have any ready source to feed those any longer. This has fracture control and there's some springs that feed this lake. Ah, so it naturally natural spring. absolutely keeps this lake full. And this lake ranges in depth from about three feet at the high point to as much as five feet deep. Boy, it is a beautiful lake. Who named it Little Lake? It is little, but it, boy, it goes, look, all the way down here to Highway 395. Mm -hmm. How did it get the name Little Lake? Well, back in the 1860s, when the Spaniards were coming through the area, before the 1860s, they, they called it Lagunita. Literal translation is Little Lake, and it's carried on since that point of time. Native Americans were here as well. Absolutely. This area that we're standing in in these cliffs is rich with cultural heritage right here. And we don't see them right now, but you say there's lots of birds and animals and all kinds of things that you can view from the observation point that we hike down from here. That's correct, yes. There's, there's, in the wintertime, this is a major flyway for migrating birds. At any given time, you might see three or 400 species of birds on the lake at a time. Well, they're just happy, just like we were, to see some real water yeah, they absolutely. can plop down in. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Boy, we have learned so much today. One of the things we've learned is that, you know, as bleak as this looks when you first see it, it's a perfect example of it. I'm a big fan of the desert. What you can find in the desert 
if you just look. Take your time, look around, you'll be surprised what you see. Yeah, there's a lot to see here. We came in search of water. Come on over here with me, Lynn. We came in search of water. We didn't find any till right at the end of the adventure, but we found places where water used to be that are still here today that you can visit and enjoy. The Trona Pinnacles, Fossil Falls, all of this beautiful area out here in the California desert. And of course, the beauty of all of this is that every place we have been today is part of the Bureau of Land Management land, which is preserved and protected by the United States government for all of us, for all the future generations to visit and enjoy just like we have today. We came in search of water. We found I didn't, it. I didn't think we were going to, <laughs> but we finally found it. And of course, the beauty of all of this is that every place we have been today, all of these places are part of the wonderful system of California's Golden Parks. I love you, California. You're the greatest place of all. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed this desert water adventure. I highly recommend you visit both places for yourself, but before you go, make sure you know exactly how to get there, and be sure and take lots of water. Now, if you'd like to see this particular adventure again before you go, share it with family or friends, or perhaps donate a copy to your local school or library. It's available on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727 and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.